begin of the year up to this time and we know certainly he's taking us into the new year let's appreciate god and say father we are faith we are grateful 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 I want you to quickly take a word of prayer we have including today about five days to the end of the year I want you to pray and say father say father I will not carry over sickness disease death death and any evil I will not carry them over into the new year pray 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 I won't carry over my problems I won't carry over my challenges this year this year this in the remaining five days in the name of Jesus man the devotion is getting the rima kolima santi thank you thank you Lord father thank you thank you thank you father do the miraculous for me the remaining five days of this year all my problems all my challenges apps anything that had been a problem for me father don't let me carry them over don't let me carry them over into the new year in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we are prayed we're going to pray and say father i have a covenant with you it's a blood covenant on account of that blood covenant father anything that you need to do in my life do it today 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 i am invoking that covenant that agreement the blood covenant for the blood of jesus that was shed for me at calvary that covenant entitles me to so many things it entitles me to protection it entitles me to life it entitles me to blessings father on account of that covenant father do the miraculous in my life today in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we are prayed awesome god rock of ages we bow before your throne of grace the holy one of israel we exalt and magnify you we thank you for having kept and preserved us throughout this year it has been an eventful year we did well so many of us were sick but you healed us thank you, Jesus. we did not die with covid and SARS did not destroy our business you kept and preserved us only with our eyes were we seeing the reward of the wicked only on the television and the news were we seeing calamities. You did not allow one to befall any member of this church. Father, please accept our thanks. Amen. Accept our praises Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, today we are bringing to focus the covenant that you have with us, which was sealed by the blood of Jesus. Help us to understand all the provisions that we have in that covenant and help us to tap into it in the name of Jesus that on account of that covenant 
we will not carry any negative thing into the year 2021 in the name of Jesus. And if there are still things in our lives and in our blood that is speaking against us on account of this ministration this morning, let them be flushed out of our system in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We have been taking a series which we are supposed to have concluded today. So by I wasn't I didn't plan to take the the word today, but you can just be sure that God is at work to do something in my life and in your life in Jesus' name. Please turn your Bibles quickly to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, 15 to 28. By this, we'll be concluding our teaching on the blood covenant. For many of you who are going to be coming to Sunday school and digging deep, I won't be able to go over all the things that we have said. But I trust that God will help us. I understand. Please bear with us. The media, they are having technical issues uh, projecting the Bible passage. So, um, so I hope your Bibles are here. Many of us are used to the thing being projected for us. Or at least your phone will have your Bible. Now, where did I say we should turn to? Hebrews chapter 9. I'll read from verse 15 to verse 28. Hebrews 9, 15 to 28. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of cows and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of a testament which God had enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heaven should be purified with this. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. Verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet he should offer himself often, as the high priest entered into the holies, into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But one but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment, Christ, so Christ was so, so Christ was offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time unto sin without salvation. We're looking at the potency of the blood covenant, and we want to read also Hebrews chapter nine, verse eighteen, for emphasis. Hebrews nine eighteen. Can we say it together? One, two. Let's go. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. I won't be able to go over all the things that we've spoken about today, Sunday school, but we were able to establish that blood, the blood is so important. And life cannot exist without blood. We were told that blood, our life is our blood. Everything about us is in our blood. Blood connects us with our 
forefathers, blood shows who we will be. Our spirit is inside our blood. That's how God created it. So that when a man loses blood, what happens to him? He dies because his spirit will have gone out for the blood. Yes. And um, I, I will, because of this ministration, I will be talking about the potency of the blood covenant. That's what I'm going to be talking about. The potency of the blood covenant. And if all the things that we have said about the blood, you had, you will know that the blood is so powerful and so important. Praise the Lord. Why must we talk about the blood covenant now? People don't like talking about blood. And I'm sure, other than some of the, other than this Sunday school, I can't remember the last time I had anybody come to preach and talk about uh, the blood of Jesus or blood generally. No, people don't want to hear about blood. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, blood covenant. There was a fact I established in the morning why people enter into covenant. The major reason, even, okay, even God himself relates to us on the basis of covenant. The, the Old Testament is called the Old Covenant. And the New Testament is called the New Covenant. God relates with us on the basis of covenant. And even all our relationships with ourselves too is on the basis of covenant. So, and the blood covenant is an agreement. It's the most binding agreement. What are the things? I mentioned some things. It's, this is also a teaching, so you can ask questions. You can stop me in between and ask questions. We took a question in the morning and I said they should bring it to this um, teaching this morning. Praise the Lord. The Bible says almost all things are by nature purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 tells us, it said, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. How many of us know that we have a covenant with the Lord Jesus? And it's called what is called the blood covenant. When did he enact that covenant? When did he enact that covenant? When? Okay. Yes. Okay. Turn your Bibles quickly. Let me start from there. The significance of the blood covenant. The first covenant was dedicated with blood. Even the second covenant that we are under is also dedicated with blood. The first one was with the blood of bulls and of animals. This one is dedicated with whose blood? The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. What did I say you should open to? Luke 22 verse 20. Luke 22 verse 20. Somebody read for us. Luke 22 20. This is Jesus at the last supper with the disciples. And what did he say? He says, likewise, yes ma'am. Also, saying, this cup, yes. So Jesus said, this is the cup of a new testament. That word testament also means covenant. This is the cup of a new testament in my blood, which is shared for you. In other words, Jesus was entering into a covenant with the disciples. Abby? And he's telling them that that covenant is going to be entered into by who? By my own blood. What does that mean? What does that mean? If he says he's going to enter into it by his blood, from all the things we've spoken about blood, what does it mean? Who is going to help me? I want answers because this is interactive. No, if he says this is a cup of a new testament in my blood what does it mean yes he's sitting with his blood okay he's okay what is i told you the, the blood is our life 
The visible pastor 17 11 says, The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, as the life of Jesus is where? Is inside his blood. What constitutes the life of Jesus? Who can help us? Or what constitutes, or let me ask, what constitutes, uh, what's uh, brother Osazu? What constitutes your life? Your life. Give him the microphone. Yes, what constitutes your life? Eh? It's my, eh? It's my body, blood, and Oh, this man is talking grammar. Your body, okay. blood. What okay. constitutes your life? My blood. Your blood. Yes. Uh, what? 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 Okay, let me help you. What has your blood produced? Children. <laughs> you are coming now. <laughs> your children. Yeah. That's your blood. Yes. What else? Uh, so, so you can understand the blood of Jesus. Your children, yes. I also came from it. Ma? Who you are? Hey, what also, who are you? Who I'm is a, Jesus? I'm from a family. Eh? I belong to a family. Let me help you. Your life, your blood, all the money you have is from your blood. All the houses you have built, your children, your family, any, in fact, your whole life is in your blood. Are you understanding me? So when you talk about the blood of Jesus, that means everything that Jesus has. His riches, his glory, your power, the power, the strength that you have is, is your blood. So when Jesus is saying, look, I'm entering into a covenant with you and I'm entering into a covenant with my blood. Let me tell you what happens when there's blood covenant between two people. There is exchange but it's not really exchange there is a merger of lives there's a merger of lives your life is now merged please follow me oh so you see your life is now merged with the life of jesus all is power all is riches all is glory all is strength everything that jesus has the moment you have entered into a blood covenant with Jesus, they belong to you, and you too, you belong to. That's when you say you give your life. It's, all, it's only for me to say that you give your blood to Him. You understand? You are giving your life, your life, your wife, your children, your money, everything. But many of us, our problem is that we say Jesus, we've given our life to Jesus, but we are still holding some things. Your money has not been given to Jesus. Or else you won't be struggling with, with finances. But let me, I'll come back to that. So, when you enter into a covenant with somebody, your blood merges. Your lives become interwoven and merged. What belongs to you now belongs to him. And what belongs to him now belongs to you. Marriage is also a blood covenant. And then when you have, then your name changes. You now have a new name. You know, the Bible says that there's a new name written in glory. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are... So you, so, you have a new name. Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. The same thing happens when we're discussing forbidding covenants. When people enter into block covenants, and say, their lives become merged. Unfortunately, most of the things that we have in the system of the world is bad. If you have sickness, a certain sickness in your body, the moment you enter into a blood covenant with somebody, that sickness is that person will share. If you have been, been visited with calamities, that person gets that too. That's why it's so dangerous to enter into blood covenant, particularly when it comes to issue of. Uh, we say it because it's so important, but right with the issue of, you know, you are merged. And if, if I'm mad with you, <laughs> and I'm mad with him, and with him, that's what, let me tell you what, 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 when that happens. When somebody has sexual relation with somebody else, a man and a woman, or they, enter, they have entered into a covenant, whether, whether they are married or not, the moment they start having sex, uh, either fornication or adultery, their lives are matched. There's a transparency. 
of spirit from the man to the woman, from the woman to the man. If the woman's family had issues, they are transferred to the man. If the man's family has, man has issues in blood, it's transferred to the woman. Then imagine a man is joined to, he's had one girlfriend, two girlfriends, three girlfriends, four girlfriends. That girlfriend has had one girlfriend, two, girlfriend, uh, two boyfriends. All those people that they have had relationship with, everything that is running in them. <laughs> this is why God says, flee 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 fornication everything that has gone on is the man gets it the chain could be the chain could be a thousand lives you get them and they could be running they will be running your blood unless <laughs> unless something is done unless something is done I, I will return to that so everything that Jesus has is in his blood. But Jesus doesn't have sickness. He doesn't have disease. So his own blood. We also spoke about blood speaking. And we spoke about blood being the means of exchange in the realm of his spirit. That's what they used to buy. Blood. And they talk about blood money. They can do all those things are counterfeits of the original. But let me go on because of time. Now we're talking about the potency. The potency. The, so when I tell you all this, you will begin to understand the power and the potency of the blood covenant we have with Jesus. When Jesus took that cup and he said, look, I'm entering into a covenant with you. A covenant is an irrevocable commitment. An irrevoc that means I'm committed totally. My life is matched with your own. If you have a problem, please follow me. If you have a problem and you come to me because of the covenant that we have with you, I have to solve that problem for you. That's what Jesus was telling the disciples. I'm entering into a covenant with you. I'm entering into an agreement with you. I'm entering to a commitment. I'm taking an oath. You're about to say, Mumbai Mule. It's more than ordinary agreement. That's what we Christians have with Jesus. Are we following? Yes. And he, he, he tells us. So when you understand the blood covenant, we know that we, we understand that the blood covenant, who we are and what we have is the Lord Jesus. What we have, it belongs to him. Many of us don't really understand it. When it comes to giving tithes, you struggle. Oh, this is my money. You struggle with tithes. You struggle with false fruits. You struggle. If you have no blood running in your system, if you have no life, you can't have any money. Your money is not your money. Whose money is it? It's God. Just as his own riches too are available for us. Why do we need covenants? And why do we enter into covenant? I answered that this morning. I answered, who can help us? Why people enter into covenant? Most important is why people enter into covenant. I answered that this morning. You know? It's for security, for protection, for assurance. That is why people, that's why, if, if I, if a, uh, I mean a sister, a brother is toasting a sister and he says, I'm interested in marrying you. And the girl says, ah, am I sure? It's like, okay, let's do covenant. It's okay, yeah, you cut your blood, you cut my own. You say, you won't leave me, oh. <laughs> if you leave me, so, 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 it's going to happen to you. You know, the same thing. Once you enter into a covenant because of insecure, and that is what we need. We need to remind ourselves. There's so much insecurity in the world today economic insecurity uh, secu I mean security kidnapping the other day we were still reading I was reading in the in, the, uh, in my whatsapp news a vehicle had been kidnapped a vehicle conveying about 18 people uh, Agofure or whatever they were the bus they kidnapped the people there they have not seen all the occupants and it's I think going to I mean, be 8 months 
both the boss and the occupant have not been seen alive. These are, these are the things that are happening in the world today. And they call for people to go back to look into this issue of covenant. Look at the economy. Things are not running properly. But when you have a covenant with somebody, he gives you assurance. In fact, you don't look at you don't look at what the economy is saying. Because your source, I shared this with some, uh, my, um, when I was in my birthday, at, about when I was working in government. The pay was useless pay. I mean, as far as if you really, if you want to live on that pay for, that, for 35 years, you will not have a bicycle when you leave when you leave government i'm telling you the truth if all you earn that's why people steal money in government you will say somebody if i tell you the governor's salary is official salary you will laugh even a graduate in a bank some banks get more money than that you know what i said that that is the man's salary he can't live on that but what i'm saying is this you can't live but I t uh, the day when I gave my life to Jesus and I realized one thing I got to the conclusion that this government where I was working is not my employer that my employer is in heaven do you understand me? because look they will give you salary 3,000 or when I say 364 naira 50 kobo grade level 08 said 4 they give you that salary it can't pay rent. Do you understand me? So you must. So when you when you have a covenant with somebody, that's the purpose of covenant. He secures you and tells you, look, don't look there. God told Abraham when Abraham we read that in Genesis chapter fifteen, Genesis chapter fifteen from verse one to verse um, eighteen. Go and read it at home, and then we read seventeen. Abraham went to God and told God, said, God, look, I am getting old. I have no child. God said, I'm going to give you all this land. And he asked, what is the assurance? What's the security I have? That what is this thing that you promised? You're going to do it. And God said, okay, what I'll do is I will enter into a covenant with you, with blood. Bring an animal, we slaughter the animal, another. And on account of that covenant that covenant was to give abraham what assurance and secret god said this whole land i'm going to give it to you go and read it in the in genesis 15 genesis 15 1 to 18 and genesis 17. so jesus was telling the disciples i'm entering into a covenant with you i will secure you that we say some trust in chariots some trust in horses some trust in the medical system in the in the doctor's equipment even the richest people they can pay for all the medicine and all what happened to them they still died some people carry well, at one time when i was in my office they used to give some people security thinking that maybe your work uh, you need security in your work they give you a policeman with a gun can now one seek some of them carry they if i when they go out sorry to say one, one of our colleagues i went to visit somebody and i saw him there just uh, level maybe 16 fellow or there about 17. he came to the man's house he's a government official he came with a convoy of about five armed policemen and he was in one car they were in one car in the uh, uh, high locks. I was so angry when I saw him. I looked at him and I said, Look, if I don't see what doesn't speak to me, that look, this man thinks he's these uh, police are the ones securing him. It's a lie. Some trust in China, some trust. Safety is of the Lord. It's of the Lord. So I, I, I just looked at it and I just laughed. I mean, how many of them, have, what would happen to them? The man can go and he can drink water and collapse and die. 
So what is the use of <laughs> well, to me. Of course I told you <laughs> I told you before about a man who was taking uh, who spent all his time on his uh, physical condition. Right food, right exercise, free range chicken, everything. Top physical condition. You know, it depended on all those things. And he asked Busky husband, what happened to the man? Okube Inon, he died. It's, with all those, with, you see, with all those things. So, but when the man, when Jesus tells you, don't look at what you see. I'm entering the covenant with you. I'm going to secure you. What you will eat, I'm going to give you. Don't look at your pay. That's what was happening at that place. What you're saying is that when you enter the covenant, that you're saying everything that that man has becomes available to you. Let me start to close because my time is running out. Now, that covenant, what the Bible tells us about covenant, Hebrew 9:16. Hebrew 9.16 so that you will understand Hebrew 9.16 what does it say? Hebrew 9.16 15 and 16 somebody is entering to a testament or a covenant with you 16 it says for where a testament is this is where I'm going to close today and then I will tell you some things for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of it of its testator for a testament or a covenant is of force after men are dead otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth you know what jesus was telling them he said i'm entering to a, 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 i'm entering to a testament an agreement a covenant with you the covenant is going to be sealed by my blood and when will that covenant take effect after after jesus dies please follow me carefully it's like a man made a will for his family everything that the man has they belong to you uh, the children you know, and now makes a will and says you so, so you take a house in Banana Island, says Brother Ebola, your own is uh, the Atlantic City, the tower that is there, that's your own. And then put everything there, they write everything in the will. And it's there in the will. But it's no use to me until, until the man dies. And that's why Jesus told them. When Paul had further revelation and he said, What did he say in 1 Corinthians 11 23? I want someone to read it for me. 1 Corinthians 11 23. Somebody read it for me, please, because I don't have it here. Yes, Paul received this from the. Yes, go on, man. Yes. Two friends. Yes. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Yes. Take, take. This, this is it. my body. Yes. Which is, which is broken, broken for, for you. you. Do this in remembrance of me. Go on. In the same manner, he took the, the cup, cup after supper. Yes. Saying, yes. This cup is the new covenant in, in my, my blood. blood. Yes. Do this as often as you drink. It. Yes. Yes. Go on. In remembrance of me. Yes. For as often as you eat. This as bread, often as you eat this bread and drink this and cup, drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. You proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Stop. When you come to communion, please follow me on. Many of you have not been coming to communion. There's going to be one last day, 31st. When you come to communion, you are, and you are taking the blood and the blood, you are announcing the Lord's death. You are proclaiming that Jesus has died. In other words, you are now proclaiming that everything that Jesus has and that he has written for you in his will in the testament you are what are you saying you are saying that ah you know it's just like my father dying now and then that building in banana island the day they announced okay, 
You know when they say Baba do you know you see the, the the joy when you are dancing people will not know why you are dancing. You, you understand? Why you are dancing? Why? Because of what has been. So when you are announcing, we're announcing that Jesus had died at communion. You know what was? The all the things that he promised. What has happened? They are now yours. They are now ours. They are now ours. So every time you partake of communion, what are you saying? You are announcing to principalities and powers. You are announcing to sickness and disease that Jesus, because Jesus is the healer. That's part of the agreement. Part of the thing in touch to, on account of the covenant that you have with him. Healing. Prosperity, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. It says, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although he was rich, yet for our sake, that's part of it. Those who do money ritual, they are following, copying counterfeits. The real original is the blood of Jesus. I told you, that blood can get you plenty of money. Stupendous money. If you understand if you understand. So the promises are there. And some people talk about, yes, pleading the blood of Jesus. What are the things? <clears throat> How many of you plead the blood of Jesus? How do you plead the blood of Jesus? I'll give you a better way to plead the blood of Jesus today as I close. I'll give you a better way. Of course, you know we have redemption through his blood. <clears throat> Uh, Ephesians 1 7. Let me tell you some of the promises that we have in the blood as, as I start to round up. Of course, I read 1 Corinthians 11 25 to you. We receive God's righteousness on account of the blood. Romans 5 12. Romans 5 12. Uh, uh, no, no, okay. No, Romans 6 23. It says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 1 7. Ephesians 1 7 it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption. What is redemption? Redemption is that you have been bought back. I told you, payment is made with blood. Jesus paid, he bought you back. He paid the devil and then got you back redeemed us. We have redemption through his blood. Yes. And we have forgiveness for all our sins. All our sins. All our sins. All our sins. First John 1 7 says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we are fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. The power, there is power in the blood of Jesus. But how do you, yes, I'll take your question. How do you plead or apply the blood? Let me close here. Because many times we say, oh, blood of Jesus. When anything happens, we say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Let me give you a better way that I learned to plead the blood. A better way to plead the blood of Jesus. Revelation. That's why Re Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. What does this say? Revelation 12, 11. It says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Let me tell you how you pay the blood. The, bl the Bible contains so many promises to what the blood does for us. Abi, one, what's one of the promises? We have been redeemed. So the Bible, so you tell yourself, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How do you plead the blood? You plead, please write this down. You plead the blood of Jesus in the situation when you testify with your mouth what the Bible says the blood is doing or has done for you. Let me go over it again. It's so important. You plead the blood of Jesus when you testify with your mouth. Are you following me? 
what the word of God says that the blood of Jesus has done for you. What are some of the promises? Look at redemption. Look at redemption. What else? Through the eh? salvation, we're saved by the blood. Yes. Hebrews 13 12. Hebrews 13 12 says, Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're sanctified. Abby? Oh, we don't have a. Okay, but Hebrew, someone read Hebrews 13 12 for us. Hebrews 13 12. Yes. That it might sanctify the people. Yes. His own blood. Suffered without the gate. So you will say, I'm sanctified by the blood. When you say with your mouth, I'm sanctified by the blood of Jesus, you are pleading the blood. What are the other things? First, okay, we've spoken about First Peter 2.24. The Bible says, Who his own self took all our infirmities, in his own body on the tree, that we've been there to sin to live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we have been healed. So when you are saying that by the power and the blood of Jesus you have been healed, you are pleading the blood concerning your health. Are we following? Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9 talks about being justified by the blood. So you say, I am justified by the blood of Jesus. I overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus. I've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. Now, in the morning, when I started talking about, when I started talking about, some of us may still have some things running in our blood, even when we are born again. Let me take your question, ma. Can I take your question, ma? Because this is where we are closing. Yes, ma. I want to ask that how potent is the blood of Jesus? How potent? Yes, I will, I will give an illustration. Yes. And um, you also mentioned the word redemption. Yes. That means we have been bought over. By the blood, okay. yes. Okay, what can we say about some believers who they are actually born again, they are good Christians. Yeah. And they know the word of God. They actually know they have to do so many of those things. Some of them have renounced the old covenant they have rededicated their lives yeah. in fact they are even married to jesus christ of a truth and then um, when they are going through situations yeah. they will still tell them in the church or maybe, or maybe SUN, word different of place, that something is or as a word of knowledge that the problem you are going through is as a result of the covenant your ancestors yeah. or also so people made and this person is now a new creature is yeah. now in jesus yeah so why do such things still come Happen. Up, even okay. when they have been bought by jesus who wants to help us before i answer yes sir please quickly give brother anugo she's saying the truth some of us still have it's in the it's in, it's running in our blood that's where our spirit is that's where those demons are it's in the blood and yes it's possible yes sir in the, in the morning our pastor told us three things about the covenant he said he was executed with the blood and the blood he said i said what it's done with the blood it's That's blood everything i, I so, in the morning i explained that our blood connects us our blood is what connects us with our past with our four four five fathers it's the same blood that is running the blood has passed to us. Okay. It passed through our father. So it connects us with old generation. If anything is happening to them, if they were idol worshippers, or if they had some some causes operating in their lives, and if it's not removed from your blood, it will still happen to you still too. To you. Sometimes if you are born again. Yes, okay, sir. But importantly, he told us about the token. Yes. That each covenant goes with what? Each token has a token, yes. That is something to show. Yeah. That look, I've entered into an agreement with this person. Yeah. Now, when you go into another covenant, you throw away the whole token. Okay. In simple life, let me put it this way. You, are, you have an account with um, Bank A. You use Bank A token for Bank A. Is it not so? If you go and open an account with Bank B and say, because I have one token, I'm still using that one, what will happen? It won't work. You won't get money from that. So, for everyone that has been born again through the blood of Christ, must throw away whatever token they are holding before yeah if you see how and a lot of mm -hmm. the time those tokens are physical things that's possible that that's can be possible. in your body 
can be tied, can be in places even in your house. Yeah. So you need to throw away those talking so that you can now go into the new covenant. Thank you. That's many times, if you don't know, the Holy Spirit can reveal to you. You can have a word of knowledge that something is in your house that you are keeping. Or you could have a dream and in the dream you will see that that is your problem. You understand me? Praise the Lord. And yes, According to her question, yes. she said but, yes. she has done deliverance, she has done everything. This person is a sanctified and she child has of the God. same problem. She or they still keep saying that the person is still suffering the same. I mean, I think there is a time of patience. Just wait on the Lord. Because you have, uh, the person has given his own life, like she said, he has done the deliverance, yeah. he has been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. You understand? And you keep on the, the blood. They, they keep telling you that they, you have the same problem. <laughs> or they keep, or the same, same thing keeps still happening. No, he mm. said they said the person still have the same problem. Uh -huh. But I think because there is no power that is greater than the power of God anyway. Yeah. So he has the ultimate power. So after waiting, according to the book of Hebrews, after yeah. doing all, yeah. there is a time to wait. Okay. And patient. And God, I believe God. Okay. Said Pastor, the person, Pastor, there, Emmanuel wants to help us. Yes, sir. The greatest uh, deliverance is sanctification. Good. If you are going to do deliverance, yeah. and they keep on delivering you. And you keep having and the same problem. Yes, the point is that you need to go into, because sanctification is two parts. Yeah. When you give your life to Jesus, you know, God carry out certain things automatically in you. But you are going to work it out too. Sanctification also means that you, you yourself, you are separating yourself, you are reading the word of God, you are praying, and you are believing. And it's a daily affair. If we are slack in our prayer and we are not actually obeying even what the scripture is saying, saying yes, de definitely we are really going to, the devil will be looking for loopholes in our life. And the moment he sees a place to hang on, he will definitely hang on. He, he, may, doesn't, he, he, may, doesn't give he may still have yes. something that is still within your system. Yes, so it's a consistent daily work. One of the things, thank you, sir. Knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, you can carry the challenge. I'll share somebody's experience with you. One of my close friends at 50 something is still not married. And then we got discussing. He will get close to getting married. And then he will not change his mind. And say that he doesn't like the girl again. That's something just that. Uh, and then, and it's repeatedly happened for over 20 something years. He's born again. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, he's almost a pastor. In fact, he's practically a pastor. Because he did his workers in training with the Milio Madi and the others. But what am I saying? Please follow me. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit and revelation. But for you, for you to drive out what is resident there, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit and revelation. For you to retain the, the cleansing and the deliverance, you need sanctification and you need to know the word of God. But you can be living sanctified life and you may still have some deposits in you if you don't know you will just get somewhere that my friend the father now father called him and told him because he came from a polygamous so that the family had that he wants to tell him the truth why he had not married and that some people had done some things in the family against him and that and that what they have done, he will never be interested in marrying anybody. But that if he will come to the village, that there are some things that they will do that they, they will change what those people have done. But that he knows that he's a pastor. So you pastor people, you say you won't come. So he said that's why he, the father said that's why he left him. 
to be fighting with his problem, but that if he agrees, he will take him to the village. The um, I'm going to, okay, yes, sir, you want to say something? But, yes, yes. He still has his problem, oh. He still has it. But the solution, I we're going to, I'll mention the solution now before we close, right. and then we'll take a word of prayer. Please, let, yes, let's, sir. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 4. Yes. Uh, so I say, now I say yes. that the hair, yes. as long as he is a child, yes. different no nothing from his servant, servant yes. though he be lord of all. Yes. But he's under tutors and governors. Yes, sir. Until the time appointed of the father. Yes. Even so, we, when we were children, yes. were in bondage under the elements of the world. Yes. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yes, God, God sent for his son, yes, sir. made of a woman, yes. made under the law, yeah. to redeem mm. them that were under the law, yes. that we might receive the adoption of sons. Yes. So, yeah, my response to the question is, yeah. uh, it's the <laughs> same thing that even though... Yeah. Are you go, saying, are you, uh, Pastor, are you saying that the fullness of time has not come? The man is yes. going to be 60 old. He has not matured. Yes, you can oh, be 60. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, wait. Paul, uh, Pastor, let me, let me answer that. Yes, it's not the hey, analogy. It's not chronological. Hey. Uh, no, the, no. Hey, let, hey. Me, let me answer that, oh. Pastor. It's because of time. Yes. We, we can discuss it on Tuesday. The analogy Paul is giving is talking about law and grace. Yes. When you are under law, yes. you are still under pupillage. Yes. The day you come under Jesus' grace, you become mature. No, you be, no. It's, it's, uh, it's, you have to come. And you, you know, I answered, I answered one thing for us to the other time yeah. that in the realm of the spirit, please know this: there is no time. Please, it will help you. There is no time in the realm of the spirit. They don't count minutes, seconds, hours, and days. In the realm of the spirit, is a continuous moment. That's right. I am. God is in the realm. Is I am. So when you are talking about timing timing only relates to this physical part of life in the realm of the spirit there is no time at all when you pray and god said i have given you so 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 or so 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 has happened to you it's right there and then it's done and as far as god is concerned it is settled god has done his own Yes, can I? It's, yes. Can, can so I, I it is learn? your faith. Yes, sir. It is your faith that is the bridge between the spirit realm and the physical. You can, God can promise you that that might, let me, he had, if I had, there were several words of knowledge that he had about what was going to, and what was, what was going to happen to him. And everything was hinged on him getting married. Yes, the, the point and is, you know, the, 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 time, yes, sir. the maturity here is not chronological age. You can, it's not so, about, it doesn't have to do okay, with, let's, okay, it, to, uh -huh. it doesn't have, it has nothing to do with the chronological age. It's not you are saying long. that it's not mature to get his deliverance. Oh, yes. No, it's but, now. No, I'll, now is the time. Yes, but that's you have what, to mature that's, into No, age. that's how the enemy defeats us. No, no. The let's, enemy let's, defeats us to let us that you have not matured. What do you mean by you are not matured? You mean physically matured? Not or spiritually matured. matured. Not, for instance, spiritually matured. Yes, yeah, the Bible says that God has put all things under man. Yes. Yet we have not seen man. Please allow, okay, yes, sir. Yet we have not seen man. Yes. Coming to that stage of all things being under him. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it not? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is God a liar? No, he's all about maturing in Christ. It's no. All, uh, yeah, no. No. What, you see, maturing. Maturing in Christ yes. does not, Pastor Yusuf, maturing in Christ does not get you the promises of God. You don't get God's promises because you mature in Christ. You get God's promises by faith to grasp what God has done and bring it by the bridge of faith into the realm of the physical. It has nothing to do with your your age in the Lord or your maturity. No. All God's promises are yea and in him, amen. When God says, if I, when God told Abraham, look at the children of Israel. God told them, said, I've given you the promised land. They refused to enter. It now took them 40 years. Is it God, is it that they were being matured in the wilderness? No. 
the, the problem with them, why did they not enter? Who knows why they could not enter? Why could they not enter? Because of what? Because of their own because belief. Their own belief. It wasn't because they didn't mature. It's revelation. Unbelief. But let me help you because many, many times, this is what, this is what holds many of us Christians bound. They'll say, oh, it's not yet time. Okay, tomorrow. God is doing it. There is nowhere in the Bible where God says, where you see God saying, when God says, you will see, when God told Abraham, he said, I've given you the land. But he didn't have the land. That is legal. But the receiving, it takes your faith to receive it. And your faith to come by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Uh, Daddy, yes. Yes, yes. Say something. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, I think the, the straight question is, does the blood of Jesus cleanse totally? Of course. Now, I will, I will, I want to give an example. Yes. Before I gave my life to Christ. Yes. I, I and my team members. Yes. We used to go about places. He is a, he is a policeman. Who, we. And so you know, <laughs> understand him when he's talking. Now. Yes, sir. We, we eat a lot of things. Yeah. Call as a jet. Yeah. Oh, so they to, give you, yes. To strengthen they give you. you Head, uh -huh, because they give you uh -huh. soap, they give you things. Yes, Some of money, them they ask us to keep under our bed. Uh -huh. You know and that I use them well, and they were working for you. Well, <laughs> according to my own <laughs> Let mentality, me tell you, you were entering into a covenant. Yes. Uh huh. So, you entered into a covenant. That was why they asked you to eat something. Sometimes, if you want superior ones, they will tell you. Your because blood. it has to do yes. with it has to do with we carrying guns, yeah. going into the front line. Yeah. You know, risking our lives. And so they told uh -huh. us those things. Sorry, sir. Uh, us. Let me interject. You enter into those things because you wanted security. Yes. You wanted assurance. Of course. And you were entering into a covenant. The one you were entering into a covenant with was then would have been one demon or a devil, the devil. He will offer you protection. There is some who use uh, bulletproof. They use a uh, uh, ado and all kinds of. Oh, yeah, go on. So. Yes. Um, Pastor, we are not in a hurry to when go. I gave Anybody my life to, can go home. When I gave my life to Christ. Yes. When I gave my life to Christ. Good. I want to hear that. Yes. I turned my back against all those things totally. Yes. Now, even those ones I consumed. Yes. I didn't even think of them. I didn't even remember them. Yes. I didn't even remember that. Uh, is this thing still protecting me? No. In fact, there are some that they will use blade to ah, incisions. Yes. I totally forgot those things and depended on Jesus Christ. Good. And all the things that they gave to me to keep under my bed, you I threw them, them away. away. Good. Even if I am just led by the Holy Spirit that there is something in your house that shouldn't be in your house, the minute I get home, I throw it away immediately. Good. So, yes, the blood of Jesus cleansed totally, but it depends on you. Jesus will do his part. Yes. And yours will come to pass if you totally believe that you believe. he has come card believe. for you. If, you if believe. not, if not, that thing will keep coming back and keep coming back. Now, if a, if a demon is in your life and they cast out one demon, that demon will not go far. Yeah. The demon will just stay in one corner. Thank you. And they will go and regroup. Yes. If you don't read your, the word of God, you don't, the word you of don't God. pray, yes. you don't fast, yes. they will come oh, back no. and they will well, get entrance. The but this God, time yeah. around, they will be stronger than ever. So you must so, keep them out of your life. Thank Praise you. the Lord. I like that. And what, kept, what keeps them out is the sanctification. If you've chased them out and you sanctify, they won't enter. Yes, sir. I want to hear Mr. Wilson too. Yes, yes ma'am. Sorry, I just want to say something. There yes. was a program I watched on this end. Yes. It's about these courses and generational courses. Yes. That. So, I think what really reactivates this man course was a sin, and he pray over it yes. and converse it on his own. Yes. But I think he was supposed to like go openly and make a conversion to the 
very particular person. Aha, uh -huh. well, the only okay. people have led him, so, yes. At the end of everything, yes. it was so that it was that same thing that it was still, you know, that was still.